Dr. Solnika Krizel um, and Dr. Jimon Shin are at um, Washington University in St. Louis, and they have been working so hard um, to study our uh, FAM 177A1 zebrafish. Um, Dr. Solnika Krizel was raised in Poland, and she studied and, and trained at the University of Warsaw, University of Wisconsin-Madison, Harvard Medical School, and Vanderbilt University. Um, she's currently the president of the International Zebrafish Society. She's an award-winning researcher, and luckily for us, she is the mama to our zebrafish. And Dr. Shin studied in South Korea and also at Vanderbilt University, and he's currently an instructor in Leela's lab, and he has been instrumental in developing and studying um, the zebrafish modeling our disease and understanding the function, developing tools for therapeutic um, development. And they've been so patient with me, with my uh, never ending stream of emails and calls and explaining all, all the science to me. So thank you for that. And uh, we are excited to hear what you have to share. Thanks, Jill. And I'll provide a short introduction to Jimans, Jimans presentation. As I already mentioned, um, we uh, encountered FAN and the fantastic uh, FAN families uh, via Undiagnosed Diseases Network, uh, which we joined in uh, 2018. Uh, UDN is NIH uh, National Institute of Health supported a very large collaborative project and um, working on FAM uh, 177A1 and developing zebrafish model uh, has been uh, both uh, challenging, but also a very satisfying um, uh, project. Um, uh, as you've already heard, uh, it is very complex uh, understanding function of a gene that uh, function of which was previously unknown. And uh, it will really take a village to understand the uh, function of FAM and how potentially we can, um, uh, we can support and, and treat uh, children with this condition. So our village is the clinical site, uh, and uh, it's been an um, uh, enormous pleasure for us to collaborate with Jennifer and, and, and also uh, Nikki Legro and, and Matt Whaler. Uh, we've been in frequent contact. Uh, also, uh, collaboration with Barack Ogur and Pietro uh, De Camilli from Yale. And we are very also excited to meet the mouse model uh, of FAM uh, today uh, and hope for, for fruitful uh, collaboration. Uh, so uh, I would like to introduce Jiman Shen, uh, who has been, who is leading the UDN project in my lab. Uh, uh, enormously talented, um, a scientist uh, who um, uh, leads our effort in genome engineering. Um, so, Jiman, uh, please go ahead. Okay, so uh, my name is Jiman Shin, and I'm an instructor in Nila Sonka Krejia Lab uh, at Washington University School of Medicine. So, uh, already the Nikki and Jennifer covered all the human uh, genetic background. So uh, we our focus on the zebrafish. And our aim basically try to understand uh, FAM function in, uh, in, 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 in human and fish. So, uh, so I don't want to go over the, uh, the stand for the UDN clinical site or not, but just to uh, try to say that um, the based on the knot, uh, we have decided to generate zebrafish FAM 177A1 gene deletion model to mimic uh, the UDN variant. So basically, we try to recapitulate human condition in fish and look carefully watch the symptom or watch the phenotype it is. So uh, before diving into the zebrafish deficient model, uh, I would like to address uh, important as, as aspect for our approach. First, uh, FAM177A1 is a small protein of unknown function. So this is part of, uh, it's tough to handle because we don't know what it is. 
And fortunately, human and zebrafish uh, fem, fem proteins are highly conserved. So we believe if we generate models, it probably is very similar uh, features we can see. Um, and unfortunately, in fish, we found two FEM genes, FEM177A1A and FEM177A1B. And from now on, to reduce the term terminology, so I will call FEM A and FEM B. And, and you can under, you, you need to understand that they are duplicated in fish. So as you can see here, we, there are several uh, different stages of zebrafish embryo you can see, and FEM-A is strongly expressed in central nervous system, but we also do see uh, ubiquitous expression in the whole early stage of em embryos. And you can also see that uh, from very early stage of the em zebrafish embryo to the uh, five-day-old, it's almost uh, uh, juvenile stage. And that stage, we uh, still continue to uh, see the strong expression of FEM-A. And FEM-B is a relatively low expression, but they also uh, express uh, continuously. So uh, initially, we because we don't have any background understanding FEM, we first try to uh, access what the function by simple expression, which is overexpression and overexpression of FEM177A1. And by doing that, we can see uh, overexpression phenotype and also we can see some other features. Uh, so here, uh, sorry. So this is our setting. So initially uh, to visualize FEM177A1 protein, we tag the uh, green, fluorescence, green fluorescence protein in the construct. So you here, you can see FEM177A uh, and neon green RNA. And also we co-injected uh, GM130 TD tomato. And because the, we noticed that some puncta in the uh, zebrafish embryo, it looks like a Golgi. Uh, so we used the Golgi marker, uh, which is uh, GM130 TD tomato. So we basically uh, synthesize this uh, RNA, and if we inject the zebrafish embryos, now we uh, the RNA can be translated, and we see uh, actual protein, and now we can see the their protein behaviors. As you can see here, uh, green colors indicating uh, fem uh, proteins and red colors indicating uh, GM130 Golgi markers. In the actual mesoderm, uh, we call the notochord, we see the, these uh, two signals, red and green colors, uh, co-localize each other. And also EVS there, which is very superficial enveloping layers uh, in fish, uh, show in these locations, in the ventral portions. And these cells is very, uh, very, uh, uh, size is big, but very uh, shallow uh, layers, and we can see very uh, nice morphology. And here, this is general cell morphology here, nucleus and uh, cells, and the Golgi is located here in this GM130 marking this Golgi complex. And in this uh, location, we see exactly uh, co-localize each other. Um, in by this experiment. Uh, we also uh, tested the human construct. So this is, the, we modified the human uh, FEM177A1 gene and fused with m neon green and basically same experimental uh, concept here. And we injected uh, both uh, RNAs into the zebrafish embryos and we see same exact uh, pattern. This uh, indicates that uh, GM1, uh, FEM177A1 is Golgi, uh, associated with, with the Golgi complex. So uh, back to the main point, we try to generate, um, uh, we try to generate um, uh, mutant that has big deletion in the FEM gene, FEM gene loci. For this, we use the 
uh, CRISPR Cas9 genome editing systems, and we successfully generated uh, many alleles. But for this uh, study, we only focused on the uh, big deletion mutants. And we are calling now this mutant a genelist mutant, meaning that they lost this big uh, portion of the gene structure here. So FEM A case, uh, this mutant uh, had losing this seven KB uh, regions in the gen their genome, and FEM B uh, genelist mutant have uh, lost 19. KB uh, in dead locus. So uh, using this mutant, we initially uh, uh, checked their phenotypes. And as you can see here, this is wild type at the one day old uh, zebrafish embryos. And single FEMA or FEMB gene is slightly reduced. So FEMA case is 88% uh, uh, shorter body axis than the wild type. And FEMB is 12% uh, shorter than wild type. When we make a double FEMA, FEMB double mutant, which is probably very similar to the uh, human conditions, um, then we see 19% uh, shorter. And we see additive uh, the features in, in, in the double mutant. So, um, and and importantly, this phenotype is basically transient. So at the later time point, such as five day old fish, they try to uh, recover the, the, this uh, slow development uh, features. So almost to, uh, they are almost close to the normal length at the later stage. So we believe this phenotype is very transient phenotype. And since uh, we uh, observed the FEM177A1 uh, is localized in the Golgi complex, we hypothesized that uh, FEM177A1 Golgi complex might be disrupted uh, some way. So to check that, we injected the GM130 TD tomato RNA again into the wild type and mutant. And we uh, tried to see the Golgi uh, morphology of the Golgi complex. And in the actual region, notochord cell is a highly polarized tissue. And, um, and we see the, that it's normally lo localized in the, in the notochord cells. So basically, we don't see any obvious defect. However, this condition is uh, ectopic, uh, ectopic. Uh, GM-130 uh, injected condition. So we, we want to uh, confirm more endogenous uh, pattern. So we just, this, we, at, that, at this time, we used the, the GM-130 antibody. So basically endogenous uh, Golgi morphology we can look at uh, in this condition. And now we see basically no certain, uh, no obvious defect in the Golgi morphology, in, in terms of Golgi morphology. So, um, but uh, one thing we, we uh, had a scenario that we haven't checked the real uh, dynamics of the Golgi formation. So, um, uh, I mean, because since Golgi complex undergoes a cyclical disassembly and re, uh, reformation during the cell division, and we might see some features uh, in the mutants. So that's the, our hypothesis. So now uh, here you can see the, from the uh, metaphase to the, uh, the anaphase uh, condition, we see wild type uh, in wild type, the Golgi, part, uh, Golgi complex is uh, make some puncta here. You can see a lot of puncta. And they are basically dramatically reduced during this uh, cell division time point. And then they just uh, uh, re re uh, form the multiple uh, Golgi complex particles in, in wild type. However, in the mutant case, the, this uh, number of the Golgi complex uh, 
marked by GM1, 30 TD tomato. Number is uh, fewer than wild type, and they are constantly lower uh, to uh, wild type situation. So with this experiment, we uh, this result suggests that might be uh, Golgi complex dynamics of Golgi complex might be reduced in the mutant. So further, we uh, validated that uh, uh, result with a different uh, marker, Golgi markers, calling Galti. Uh, Galti uh, uh, is a, basically the, also another marker for Golgi complex. And during the, this metaphase, they are dissociated and they don't form any uh, complex, Golgi complex, because they have to divide in the, in, and split into the daughter cells. And in the mutant, you can see these uh, strong, uh, strong signals in, in the spindle, uh, uh, mitotic spindles. So this is also indicating that uh, this uh, disassembly and reconstitution uh, cycles are somewhat altered in the mutant. And, this might be a strong evidence of how uh, FEM177A1 uh, function uh, in the Golgi. And so to gain further uh, insight into the function of the FEM177A1, we performed a bulk RNA seq analysis uh, using this eight day old zebra fish larva showing here. And also uh, Stanford clinical site also ran uh, RNA seq data seq analysis using human fibroblast uh, uh, cells, and you can see here this heat map, uh, correlation heat map. We can clearly see wild type and double mutant, single mutant. So you can uh, we have a distinct uh, RNA seq pattern here, and also. Uh, uh, the human uh, fibroblast RNA seq data, we can see uh, control versus uh, fan deficient, uh, deficient uh, cell have show clear distinct pattern here. So, uh, and our bioinformaticians, Bo Zhang and Wen Jia Feng, uh, analyzed our uh, both the RNA seq uh, data set and found that this um, uh, from uh, uh, by uh, principal component analysis, wild type versus mutant have 78% um, variance differences. And, but the from double mutant versus single mutant, only 16% uh, variance, we, uh, we found that. And uh, interestingly, in human case, uh, this is control and uh, UDM variants, uh, the principal component analysis showed that 72% uh, of variance. So the, this variance is quite similar uh, human versus zebra fish uh, condition. So further, uh, our bioinformaticians uh, 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 analyze intersection of RNA seq data uh, by comparison of human data set and zebra fish data set and found that nine uh, pathways uh, are somewhat consistent, commonly upregulated, uh, such as uh, immune system process pathway or um, the this, uh, response to lipid pathways upregulated. Unfortunately, we, we couldn't find any uh, overlapping uh, pathway uh, which that uh, downregulated in, the, in both data sets. So this is uh, probably uh, compare comparison between whole organism tissue versus single cell uh, or might be species differences. Um, also, we ran uh, metabolomic analysis uh, with the Mayo Clinic, uh, Mayo Clinic UDM metabolomic core and the Gary Pettis lab. So, uh, and with this uh, metabolic net, uh, network analysis, we found that um, lipid biogenesis pathway is uh, altered. And 
and amino acid biogenesis uh, pathways altered. So somewhat uh, both uh, human and fish uh, metabolomic uh, data uh, suggest that this uh, uh, lipid and amino acid biogenesis pathway might be affected in by FAM 177A1 deficiency. And one thing I would like to note that is common uh, misregulated metabolite is a phospholipid species. So both in human and fish, we found a lot of abnormal uh, uh, level of phospholipid, which is a component of the uh, membrane. And I believe that is uh, probably a uh, connection with the Brax, uh, uh, Brock's work, and that's the, our next speakers. So to, in summary, we found two zebrafish genes, uh, which is a homologue of the human femur 77A1. And uh, importantly, human and fish uh, fem genes, uh, fem proteins are conserved. And uh, fem proteins are localized primarily in the Golgi complex and they probably have an important job in Golgi complex, which uh, associated the modification of proteins and secretion of proteins. And single and double mutants show transiently shorter uh, than wild type. However, they are viable and fertile at the adult stage. And uh, we also found that uh, fem mutant fem deficiency impaired Golgi complex dynamics during cell division, and RNA seq data reveals upregulation of apoptosis, inflammation, and response to hormone and endogenous stimulus uh, processes, as well as downregulation of the DNA replication, cholesterol synthesis pathway, and sterol. Uh, metabolite processes. Intersection of uh, transcriptomics and metabolomics analysis supports that misregulation of apoptosis, inflammation, cholesterol, and uh, possible lipid biogenesis and amino acid pathways. Uh, this is the last slide. Uh, I would like to thank our wonderful mentor, Lila Sonika Krejel. And also, I special thanks to Ryan. Uh, uh, he's here, and he performed most of the experiment. And also, Albin and Sarah is our uh, post uh, back crew, and uh, put a lot of effort uh, for the uh, analyzing other UDN uh, cases. And NJ anal analyzed the protein structures for us. And Viviana recently joined a new postdoc, and she also uh, performed uh, analyzing new uh, UDN cases. And Bojang and Wenjia, uh, Wenjia uh, analyzed our bioinformatic data. And, and also, I would like to appreciate the Stanford UDN clinic site, Jennifer and Matthew and Nicole for uh, collaborations. And also, I would like to thank you, Mayo Clinics, uh, Ian. Uh, to uh, to run our metabolomic zebrafish metabolomic samples, and also I would like to thank the Gary Petty and Madeline and Lee for the metabolomic analysis, and Pietro and uh, Barak for uh, uh, BP, uh, collaboration. Uh, each each uh, collaboration of the FEM 177A1 functional analysis, and also I would like to thank you, John Postrate. He found uh, fem, uh, different fem version, fem B genes. And finally, I would like to thank, uh, special thank to the uh, fem 177A1 patient uh, family and research fund. Thanks a lot. If I can also join um, uh, these acknowledgements, um, Jill said uh, she is bothering us with emails and phone, phone calls. Jill, you're our inspiration, you're our motivation, and, and the entire family, and you are also glue of this entire fan village. So thank you so much for, um, uh, for your championship of, of uh, this research. Oh, you're very welcome. Um, there is so much to unpack in there. Um, 
we are, um, which I think we will, unless there's any urgent questions about this, um, I think we'll wait till the end in the, you know, with respect to time, we are a little bit behind now. Um, so I think we'll move on to our next speaker, unless there's any pressing questions right now. Anything? Um, thank you again very much for the amazing work you're doing with those fish. It's just, it's so ironic. I think all the, um, the families have shared that all our kids are are better in water than they are on land. The fight against gravity is is gone. So it's it's uh, really appropriate that these fish are teaching us so much about this disease and about our kids.